hi you guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here my name is Michelle and I am with Soul Purpose Activation today I'm gonna to be doing something a little different for you guys if you've seen the title <laughs> um, it's all about escaping heartbreak hotel okay um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying escaping heartbreak a hotel this is for those of you who have been stuck on heartbreak, a heartbreaking situation, a breakup for way too long, okay? And way too long means whatever that means for you. It could only be three months, it could be eight effing years, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, um, as long as you're stuck in that heartache, and a lot of the times it's simply because you don't know how, you don't know how to escape heartbreak hotel. Um, you're not able to move forward with your path in this life, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today. And the reason why I'm sharing this information with you is because I've done it myself, all right? I've escaped Heartbreak Hotel a couple of times. The first time it took me eight years to escape. <laughs> the second time it didn't take me long at all. It took me, I don't know, maybe six months. Um, and the reason why I know how to do that now is because there's actual steps that you can take okay but largely it's all about um, learning to learning how to unearth or bring up in into your conscious awareness the subconscious cycles that are being triggered by the heartbreak itself whether the heartbreak just happened or if it happened eight to ten years ago all right um, there's a reason why you can't escape heartbreak hotel um, it's because the the trigger that that breakup is triggering <laughs> has not been resolved, okay? I'm a very, um, I'm the kind of teacher that not only do I like to share insightful information, I like to tell you how you can put the information that I share into practice so you can actually live the life that you want to live, okay? So first what I want to do, you guys, is I want to share with you a couple of resources. They're books that I want you to go check out, okay? Uh, and both of these you're gonna be, um, need to be read. They don't need to be read in tandem, but they need to be, um, they need to be read, okay, period. <laughs> um, one of them is called The Sedona Method. The other one is called uh, Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Um, this deals with heart issues, emotional issues, this deals with mind issues, okay? Both of these deal with subconscious issues on the heart level and the mind level. And um, what you'll find is when you get really good at applying, because th these are how-tos, how-to books, okay? And so they teach you actual steps on how to um, release the trigger, release through the trigger and actually let the trigger go so that you can finally experience freedom from your heartbreak, okay? You can finally escape Heartbreak Hotel. So how we're going to do this, you guys, is I'm actually going to allow the universe to guide this conversation, um, to guide this video, to let me know what exactly what kind of information that needs to be shared during this time, because there's honestly, I could teach about this forever. There is so, it seems to be so much, but honestly, once you learn the how-to, um, it becomes a habit. It just happens automatically. When you learn how to let go or release through um, faulty mental belief systems, it, that itself becomes a subconscious habit, okay? Same is true for learning how to release through really painful, big emotions and feelings. Once you learn how to do it, it just becomes, um, ah, sadness. <laughs> All right, yeah, I can feel that. Uh, and that's why I um, brought you guys, that's why I brought you guys here. <laughs> I guess in a way I did, but that's why I'm, I'm doing this video is to kind of give you like, I don't know what I want to call it, heart balm, balm for your heart, <laughs> healing balm for your heart. All right, so you guys, the way that this works is um, when you're stuck in the past, you're stuck on what someone did to you. Mainly where this where this 
this wall to healing like what is keeping you stuck in heartbreak hotel goes all the way back to a core root issue of feeling abandoned or the fear of feeling abandoned coupled with the fear of not being good enough or not being worthy so what that causes is it's like you need validation you need someone to tell you maybe not even tell you you just need them to give you their presence you know you need them to call you you need them to text you you basically need to know that they're thinking about you that you're on their mind because in your in your mind and in your heart doing so it's like okay I'm worthy or I matter or you know I'm I I'm worth loving I'm lovable okay and you guys have to remember this is some of this is subconscious although when you're really down in the depths of the pain of the breakup um, you'll see that that's true there's a reason why you're feeling so heavy inside when you're going through separation okay it's because there's something that you're wanting from that person that you're not getting and it's dissecting the reasons why you're wanting those things that is going to bring you the freedom that you're wanting okay so think about you guys why you're wanting what is it you're wanting when you're wanting them to call you or what is it you're wanting when you're uh, when you're hoping that they'll text you or ask to see you again or you know ask to reconnect with you and maybe work on things again what is it that you're wanting are you wanting control are you wanting love you're definitely wanting connection but it goes deeper than that you know we're peeling these back in layers are you wanting love are you wanting validation are you wanting acceptance are you wanting to know that you matter that you're important that you're worth something and the problem here is in the energy of wanting when you look at things from an inner an energetic standpoint and I'm doing a lot more talking than I am pulling cards but this is just how it is <laughs> when you are um, from an energetic standpoint you're in the state of wanting the energy of wanting all that is doing is creating more situations more experiences to leave you in that state of wanting okay if you think about like attracts like that's exactly what's happening so it's actually you wanting that reconnection to happen that is keeping that reconnection from happening because you have to think of energy like because wanting something because you are lacking it that is resistance to what is resistance and is energy just like anything else and so resistance is a block that keeps you from being able to receive that which you are wanting okay um, so what you have to do is it's it, it seems really simple but if you don't know how to do it <laughs> all right um, what you have to do is you got to stop wanting okay and actually what you have to do and this is what the Sedona method teaches is to release the wanting um, so what you have to do because the reason why this is such a block is because it's it's a block to the healing that could come it's a block to the truth that when you finally hear and receive the truth it will finally release you from heartbreak hotel okay it will release you from heartbreak hotel the fact of the matter is and this is why releasing is so important because right now you're just hearing my words you may not really to be able to to connect to it on a soul level yet but this is what releasing the wanting does it it takes that energy out of your energetic um, body and then it clears the channel so that you can receive the information the divine intervention the resources that you need to finally get that into your central nervous system so it can finally be recorded into your soul okay so let me pull some another card real quick actually I'm gonna keep on this one we'll talk about how to release the wanting all right and you have to you guys remember you got to remember about the energy of wanting oh yeah healing <laughs> 
help from above, okay? Yes, the universe wants, the universe is bringing this information to you because the universe or God or source, angels, spirit guide, whatever you identify that divine, uh, that divinity with is, is wanting you to escape, wanting you to feel free, wanting you to feel satisfied, wanting you to feel whole, wanting you to enjoy and love the life that you're living, okay? So you are being guided to learn how, <clears throat> well actually it's so, what I was going to say is as far as wanting goes, wanting love is blocking the truth from you, that you, you don't need love because you are love. I'm sure you've heard that many, many times before, but up until this point for you, it may just be like a mental concept, like you haven't really internalized it. It hasn't really become like, you know, a revelation or a part of who you are. You know what a revelation is? A revelation is that knowing that breaks through um, that egoic patterning, that uh, corrupted egoic patterning. Egoic patterning is based out of fear, you guys, okay? So when I'm talking about corrupt ego, um, Ego is not bad, it's not good, it just is. And we need ego. Ego is what keeps us from getting hurt, okay? Uh, ego is what keeps us from jumping in front of moving cars. It's what keeps us from, um, you know, sticking our hands on a hot stove. Ego keeps us safe, okay? Uh, but ego is often corrupted. Um, I call it, and it can be a virus, the virus of fear. It can be completely corrupted with the virus of fear, okay? And you know, your ego doesn't know what's best or what's not best or what's good or what's bad or what's destructive or what's constructive. It doesn't know. It just is. It's a program on a computer, basically, that is your brain, okay? <laughs> or not just your brain. I mean, it's, you know, your, your, um, <clears throat> your subconscious is more than just your brain. But anyway, getting back to it. So when, you're, when you think about the energy of wanting in that because uh, when you think about wording right we don't want to get stuck on wording but I do have to share because there are some people who egos are going to get stuck on things okay so I'm honoring that I'm acknowledging that and so you've got wanting in a way where you're really expect you know you're in joyful expectation you got the tracking number you know it's coming you're super excited you're like you know I'm so excited you know then you got the wanting where it's coming from a space of lack you know, you want it, but you're not, you're doubtful that you can ever have it. It's that energy. You got to think about things in terms of energy. How does that energy make you feel? What does that feel like in your body? I'm trying to get this connected to you in a way that um, you'll be able to interact with it and eventually let it go. Okay, it's that spirit of wanting, that energy of wanting that we are working with here because it's that energy of wanting that is keeping you stuck in Heartbreak Hotel. All right, so think about what it is you're wanting from the person that is causing you this intense heartbreak. What are you wanting from them? Okay, and it can be anything. Uh, it can be I want validation. I want to feel okay. Uh, you know, insert whatever, in, you know, in the blank. Just fill in the blank. Now what you need to understand is the fact that you wanting that, you being in the energy of wanting that, is actually blocking you from receiving that. Okay? I hope you have some basic knowledge of the law of attraction that would greatly help you out here. Um, but, you know, and then you have to dig a little bit deeper than that, okay? So what is the core want that is driving this desire for this other person? Most of the time, it's the core, you know, want of I, I want to feel, I want to feel safe is a big one. I want to feel safe. I want to feel validated. I want to feel seen. It can be something, but these are very, very core. And so you start working on these wants and you peel, you peel them back like an onion, okay? And eventually what ends up happening is you find the one that's, that is the root, the root system of the entire effed up tree. And then like magic, the whole thing from the roots all the way up to the top and all the branches just start to disintegrate, okay? 
So as the Sedona method will teach you, there's four questions that, um, well, four basic questions that you ask yourself because you have to let go of wanting. So wanting something, like I said, is, is causing the block, okay? You're in resistance. That resistance is keeping the situation exactly the way that it is, okay? So the first thing that you have to do, you guys, is you have to make peace with what is. So you have to make peace that you're not getting what you want from this person, okay? Um, and you have to allow yourself to sit with whatever feelings that brings up. And what I mean by sit with it, you know, that feeling's already there, or welcome it. You can say welcome it even. But, you, you know, because most of the time what we're doing, resistance pushes that down. And the bad thing about that is if you would just let that feeling or that emotion come up for air, let it sit there, let it process, it actually leaves. What we do by maintaining resistance over something is we keep it there. We keep that energy there. Where if you would allow yourself to feel it and make peace with it, however long that may take, that feeling will start to dissipate and start to leave and you start to feel a lot lighter, okay? So the first thing that you have to do when you're in that energy of wanting, and I really want you to connect with how you're feeling, not getting what you want from this person. What's that feeling that pops up? What does that feel like in your body? What images are going through your mind, but mostly what you're really gonna be able to connect with is what, what where is that in your body? A lot of the times you can feel it maybe um, in your gut, like an emptiness, or you can feel it like a, a, a dense ball of energy in your chest area. And that is literally that energy, that energy of whatever emotions that that is made out of. So that dense energy could be made out of uh, resentment, rejection, what it feels like to be rejected, what it feels like to be abandoned, what it feels like to be whatever is there, okay? So what you do is sitting with those feelings for a second, you're welcoming it. What does welcoming it mean? It means allowing those feelings to sit there with you at the table. And it doesn't mean you're inviting them in. They're already there. So what you're doing is you're letting them sit there with you. You're letting them have a voice. You're listening to what they have to say. And everything that comes up out of this session is what you release through, okay? Because these wants are made up of emotions and thought patterns. And this is how you deconstruct what is keeping you stuck in Heartbreak Hotel, okay? So the first thing you do is you sit there with that painful feeling, those painful thoughts, and you allow yourself to accept whatever the reality is but try your best to kind of like step back and maybe even write some of this stuff down because what's coming to me is that when you're sitting down and you're thinking like you know um, the thoughts that are coming up is I you know I'm not good enough I'm not good enough again will I ever be good enough and those are painful thoughts that cause painful feelings that tend to get, you know, that get in your body and can get stuck when you're not allowing them to process. Okay, and this is where loving what is comes up because loving what is, when those thoughts pop up, those painful thoughts that say I'm not worthy, loving what is, this book teaches, teaches you how to question those thoughts. Just because you're having those thoughts doesn't mean they're true. That's where a lot of your pain is coming from. Your pain is coming from believing those thoughts. Who said those thoughts are true? What, what is making those thoughts true? Are they true? And then you're saying, well, yeah, it's because they're not with me. If they, if, you know, if I was, you know, if I was good enough, they would be with me. Really? Is that true? Is it true that if you were good enough, they would be with you? And then, you know, something else that the book teaches you is to teach you how to challenge or question whatever evidence your corrupt egoic mind brings up, okay? I need to find a different name for that because that kind of sounds, I don't know. But anyway, and so you question, you question every single thought. And then whatever evidence pops up that says that 
you know, it's true because you question that too. Okay, so is it really true that the reason that you're not good enough because they don't want you? That's that's why they're not with you. Is that true? Could there be any other reason why they're not with you that has nothing to do with you? Now, the funny thing is about our brains and our minds, you guys, is they are um, informa information. It's an information seeking machine. So if you ask your mind, is there any other reason why? They're not with me. That has nothing to do with my value as a person. You know what's going to end up happening? It's going to start giving you answers to that question. And this is how a new belief system is starting to be built. So let's just ask ourselves this question. And I'll use myself as a perfect example because I'm about a year out of, I'm, I've been a year separated from my husband. And we've been in a very toxic marriage for um, almost nine years. And this is how I did it. This is how I got over it. And I'm, I've hardly pulled any cards, you guys. I should have had this like a face on face, but honestly, <laughs> I'm not camera worthy right now. I just got out of the shower. Anyway, um, so, you know, when my husband and I were going through, our, first started our separation, um, this was the process that I used because these were the thoughts that came up. You know, and so I would ask myself, you know, is it true that the reason why he's not with me or I'm not with him because this was a mutual split but you know going back and forth there were times in our in our marriage where it was toxic in that I was chasing after him even though I should not have been so I'm just giving you an example um, you know so what reason could there be that he's not pursuing me that has nothing to do with my worth as a person. And, and you guys, there's tons of evidence to, to back that up as well. You know, um, he's got his own issues. Um, he can only love me at the depths that he's able to love himself, which is not very much at all. Um, he's got his own demons that have nothing to do with me. He is someone who is categorized as an anxious, or I'm sorry, an avoidant attachment. And that has nothing to do with me. And so what, what ends up happening is you start to build a case for your worth, as, as opposed to what you've been doing is building a case against your worth. Okay, and this is how you systematically destruct this heartbreak cycle that you're in. This is how you get out of heartbreak hotel. Okay, and so you sit there and you and you sit here with those feelings that wanting Okay, so the next thing that you do is after you've welcomed it after you sat with it after you questioned it You know things of like that nature The second thing you do is you Ask yourself now, you know, can I let it go? Can I let go of wanting to feel good enough? Now, why would you do that? Why would you want to let go of wanting to feel good enough because remember guys wanting is resisting and it's a block okay so as long as you're wanting to feel good enough you're never actually going to experience feeling good enough so one of the things that Hale Dwoskin said is and he's the guy um, who wrote this book about the Sedona method he says you can either want something or you can have it or experience it okay having and experiencing are the same thing so do you want to feel good enough or do you want to experience feeling good enough because you can't have both okay so can you let go of wanting to feel good enough because that that's gonna take that energy that's blocking you from feeling good enough and it's going to let it process and dissipate out okay so if you say well can I let go of wanting to feel good enough and pretty soon you're going to start feeling this heaviness in your body um, start to lighten because you're letting that energy finally free because when you think about like emotions are actual energetic things okay that get stuck in your body think about like electrical occurrence electrical currents even though you can't see it you know it's there and when you when it, when an electrical current gets built up to a certain point you know where it pops that's when you can feel it and that's what's going on here it's like our emotions our emotions and our thoughts 
are they're like currents right and when we hold on to something so like when one comes up where it's like causing us to feel really heavy dark you know thoughts and feelings and stuff like that and it's like we try to resist it like we don't want to let those things process we're actually keeping them stuck in our body where it is allowing those the, those thoughts to cycle and cycle in our minds in our energy bodies and stuff like that okay so when you allow that energy current to just complete its cycle you're not trying to stuff it down you're not trying to change it you're not trying to fix it figure it out or anything like that you just allow it to complete its cycle and it finally just goes away all right so after you have you know you asked yourself can I let go of wanting to feel good enough the next thing that you do is um, would I would I let go of wanting to feel good enough because a lot of you especially in the beginning of the situation you might be like no I, I don't know that I can let go of wanting to feel good enough so you know the next question then is kind of for that it's like well okay but if you could let go would you let go and then your mind you know uh, the egoic mind is going to be like oh well yeah you know of course if I could I would and that is still releasing and taking the lid off of that so that it can process and, and, and go the next question and the last question is when when will I let this go and what always comes up is now's a good time <laughs> I mean you could if you wanted to say well I don't know you know maybe I'll let it go tomorrow but honestly you know how long do you want to hang on to that painful feeling how long do you want to hang on to the feeling of not feeling good enough you really don't and so naturally your mind is going to say now I'm gonna let go of it now okay and that's the process of actually letting go and releasing what is keeping you stuck in a heartbreak hotel all right I'm gonna see if the universe wants me to talk about anything else maybe the some people maybe some of you here have some Oh, Phoenix Rising. <laughs> Not only are you guys going to um, escape Heartbreak Hotel, you are going to be a whole different creature in a, a most gorgeous, magnificent way. Because you're learning, okay? You truly are going to escape from Heartbreak Hotel. And especially once you really learn, because this process is going to become, um, it's going to become second nature, okay? It really is going to become second nature so that you're not um, even having to think about the steps. It when you do it enough, it becomes a habit so that it just um, it happens naturally. The minute you feel something heavy or dark, it's a subconscious process that happens that allows you to just release right through it so that it doesn't get stuck. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get some messages from um, the universe to us, to you. So, seeing how this worked out, I actually did not pull a lot of cards. I did way more talking than pulling cards. So, the next time, you guys, when I do this kind of a talk, it'll just be face-to-face, -face, okay? <laughs> Video-wise, anyway. Um, it'll be a lot more interactive so you're not, you're not looking at an empty desk. All right, let's get some messages. Can we get some messages, universe? Some loving messages. It's kind of funny. I'm not getting any jumpers. <laughs> like it's wanting you to like, you know, um, rewind, watch this again, take notes, um, be interactive with it, go through the steps, go through them again, go through them many times. Because you're going to have, you guys, multiple things come up. Like I said, one feeling is going to come up with 10 different beliefs, belief patterns. I'm not good enough. Um, I wasn't worthy of love. Um, they abandoned me. And again, that's when you say, well, can you let go of not wanting to be abandoned? Because the truth of the matter is, when you let go of it, you're, you're, you will realize you never truly are. And what, so, you know, and digging deeper, it's like, okay, what, what are you making feeling abandoned mean about you? You're wanting connection. 
you're wanting love, acceptance, validation again, and you just keep going through. It says, I am absolutely in love with you. Will you choose me? You hurt me, but I guess that's okay. Or but that's okay, I guess. So like the universe is really, and it's not just the universe, you guys. You have to understand that you and the and the universe are not separate. You're, you are intricately connected. So this is like you talking to yourself. And this is where this all starts. Part of, or I should say that the majority, ah, okay, <laughs> universe is like, stop. Um, 100%, 100%, this healing starts with realizing that everything you're looking for outside of yourself is a lie keeping you from the realization of who and what you truly are, okay? You don't, you don't need love because you inherently are love. It's like asking a chair, can you be a chair? <laughs> and the chair is just like, I'm, I am a chair, I'm just here. You know, how can a chair look for another chair outside of itself you know what i mean to give the chair what it needs it's like a chair is just there and this is basically the same with you it's like you're looking for something outside of yourself that you already are um oh i never imagined so much perfection and this is what you need to realize about yourself everything you are looking for outside of yourself you already are So you need to start like filling your own cup with these revelations and these realizations. You know, um, if you are believing a lie that you're not worthy because someone outside of you isn't, you know, treating you the way you want to be treated, they're not giving you the attention you, you know, you, you want or need, or they're not giving you that validation. You need to, you know, let go of that wanting first and foremost, and then you need to start turning that around and asking yourself um, because you're forgetting. And this is how the mind works. The mind is very good at, especially when there is a belief system, at deleting, completely deleting all evidence to the contrary. And what this subconscious belief system does, because again, a subconscious belief system it doesn't know right it doesn't know what's best for you or what's or what's not good for you it doesn't know that something's going to hurt you or harm you or help you or strengthen you it doesn't know it just is it's a program okay it is a program think about a program on a computer it's it just is right that's just what it is and so um and that yelling in the background just threw me off track you guys Goodness gracious, I hate when that happens because I had something really good that I was going to say. Do you even see me that way? Do you see yourself that way? Do you see yourself as this magnificent person? Oh, we were talking about your worth, okay? So this is how the subconscious works. It completely deletes all evidence to the contrary of what you are. So if you have a pro if you are programmed to believe okay your mind is running a subconscious program that believes or making you believe that you're not worthy guess what's going on you guys that energy that energy is going out into the universe and it is causing the universe to bring to you people um, situations events circumstances to keep you or to mirror that back to you because that's how um, subconscious programming works it has to be validated so it sends those things to you to validate now the universe isn't sending anything to you like directly you have to think of the universe it's simply the field of possibilities okay so when your energy goes into the field of possibilities it's like you're you're making a transaction you're saying here's my money okay here's my belief system that I'm not good enough and the universe is just like, okay, here's, here you go. And it's giving you back evidence that you're not good enough. What's going to end up happening is once you start working on dismantling this belief system, you're going to start giving the universe a currency that says, I'm good enough. I'm worthy. So the universe is going to start giving you back in exchange people, evidence, relationships, circumstances, 
stuff like that, that mirrors back to you and validates to you that you are worthy, but it starts with you, okay? So you literally have to question these thought patterns and you have to provide evidence to the contrary. So you have to really literally sit down and counsel yourself. This is like tarot therapy, okay? Tarot therapy, uh, tarot therapy Tuesdays. I think it should be a thing, <laughs> okay? Um, but this is like tarot therapy. You, you sit down with yourself. You know, it's like you're a parent, you know, talking to your inner child and letting your inner child know, no, the things that you think about yourself, those aren't true. And this is why they're not true. Okay. You are worthy. And here's why, you know, you are, you know, you're worthy because you're love and because you're love, you are loving. You watch out for people and then you can, you know, you can list all of the different reasons like your attributes and your strengths and your talents and stuff like that. You know, maybe you're very forgiving. Maybe you have a natural, um, just an unwavering faith in the way that the universe works. You know, maybe you're really good at manifesting. You have so many things about you that make you worthy, but because you're programmed with this subconscious belief that you're not worthy, your mind completely just deletes all that evidence because it has to validate the programming that you're not worthy. Is any of, I hope this is making sense, you guys, okay? I'm gonna get a few more of these cards, you know, because that's how I have this set up. <laughs> oh, and it says, will you choose me? Okay, are you going to choose? Because what, what I want you guys to really understand and what is going to happen eventually is you're going to realize you're not your thoughts. Okay, you're not even what you feel. You're not even your body, okay? You have thoughts, you have feelings, you have a body, you've got nails. I got nails, but I'm not my nails. I can cut my nails and then you know, that's it. If I cut my nails, am I dead? No. <laughs> All right. Um, and even if your body dies, are you gone? You still exist and you still live on, right? So you're not your thoughts. You're not your emotions. Those are just things that you have. You learn to kind of not disassociate, but you learn, you become an observer. You learn to, car to, to, comp to compartmentalize things. It's the most beautiful thing to really be able to step outside of yourself and to see um, some sabotaging or corrupting programming at work, you know, so for the purposes that you can actually sit there and pick it apart. Oh, I am coming, trust. Like you, like the real you, the real authentic you, the you that is beyond this negative, um, corrupt, corrupted ego that is keeping you stuck in Heartbreak Hotel, your authentic, beautiful, majestic, gorgeous self is gonna bust through, okay? And you're gonna be happy again. You're gonna be glowing again. Um, you're going to be seeing in color again. I am even hearing you're gonna be singing. <laughs> you're gonna be singing again. Even those of you that maybe not be the best of singers, you're just gonna be feeling so much joy. You're just gonna be connected. You're gonna be feeling so connected again. Um, almost like I, and I can, I can see it like, you know, you're plugging yourself back into source again. And it's like, you, you finally, you're, you're fully powered. Oh my gosh. I'm getting goosebumps at that. <laughs> All right, you guys, that was this talk. Um, again, I had no idea how this was going to turn out. I thought I would be pulling a lot more cards than I was, but, um, you know, I'm guess that that's just how I channel messages like that. Um, so next time it'll be a, it'll be a face to face. All right, you guys, thank you for sticking around. If you stuck around this far, let me know if this helped you out in any way and we can make it like a regular thing, maybe like a tarot therapy Tuesday, or, you know, if you like the whole thing on heartbreak hotel, maybe we can do something like that or just a healing thing. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We'll roll with the flow. We'll see how it goes. I love you guys so much. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I honor so much the time that you spend with me because honors, you know, time is precious. It's finite. And, you know, I love that you're gaining value that you want to, you know, spend some of that time with me. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Love you so much.